Hello and welcome to another Explore with me. And today I brought my friend Dean along. He's just checking things out over there. Uh, today we're checking out something which has become something of an urban legend over the uh, past few decades here in the Niagara region. Uh, we've come to check out what is known to be known as the Screaming Tunnel and the Blue Tunnel. Uh, so that's what we're going to be doing today is checking out both tunnels and see what we think of them. And uh, yeah, we'll take it from there. So our first stop is going to be the Screaming Tunnel, which is located on the north end of Niagara Falls, and which is exactly where we are right now. And uh, we're just going to go check it out. Urban legend has it that in this tunnel, a young girl died in here. And there's actually three accounts of that story. And each one keeps getting more and more gruesome as we go along. So here's the first one. There are three versions of what allegedly took place in this tunnel and I'll quickly just go over them. Uh, but you're gonna find one thing as I tell you about this, they get a little bit more gruesome as we go along. So let's start off with number one. Okay, one of the first stories uh, regarding this tunnel is of a young girl who was running away from a burning building, uh, probably the farm she was living in or her home. And um, she, she ran into this tunnel with her clothes alight and she apparently uh, made it as far as to the middle of the tunnel where she kind of virtually just burnt to death. So that is story number one. Alright, because urban legend number one wasn't good enough, number two has got a little bit more detail. It's alleged that the girl's father dragged her down here and in a fit of rage he killed her and set her on fire and burned her alive. Hence the screams. Oh wait, it gets worse. Here's number three. Legend has it, this is the worst one. Um, a drunk guy, I'm not making this up, he's on the internet. A drunk guy brought the girl down here and raped her, sadly, and then killed her and then burnt her body to dispose of the evidence. That is one of the most gruesome uh, accounts of what actually took place in this tunnel and created the screams. So maybe we need to get Snopes involved and get them to check uh, out whether this is actually true or not. So who knows? So those are your three urban myths, but there's one more, and there's one more which actually comes from the historians of the area. Okay, local historians of the area have you written down that what actually transpired that night, which actually this just sounds a bit more realistic, is that a local woman who 
wasn't originally from here but was living in the area uh, became so unhinged and she was hated by a lot of people actually used to come down here and actually walk into the tunnel and just scream as loud as she could and hence that's why the name Screaming Tunnel came from and to me that sounds a bit more realistic All right, if I was to go by what the historian said, and instead of going by the urban legend, it would make more sense. I can only imagine that probably the woman came from up here. Uh, maybe there's a settlement up there back in the day. And she would have ran right down here and let her uh, anger out. All right, there you have it. That is one down, one to go. We're now going to make our move over to the other tunnel, which is not too far away. A little bit, uh, about a five minute drive. You probably could walk it if you wanted to, but we, we're going to drive somewhere, then we've got a couple of kilometre hike after that to get to exactly where we're going. That's if we can make it. Uh, so the next stop, we're going to make it to the, uh, the, the Blue Tunnel? Blue Tunnel. Blue the Blue Tunnel. So we're going to the Blue Tunnel, also known as the uh, Meriton. Meriton? Meriton Tunnel, and so on. So let's head down there. All right, we're on our way to uh, the other tunnel. Quite a bit of a track uh, from where we parked, but uh, we just found this path. So I was going to carry on walking down that road, but uh, this path showed up, and I believe the bridge over there is what's over the third Welling Canal. If that's the case, we're going the right way. So, uh, yeah, we're on our way to the Blue Tunnel. See if this one's scary. It's full of history. I'll tell you about it when we get there. I love old bridges like this. That's another video I want to do eventually, is look into old bridges, because some of these bridges are really, really old. Uh, First, uh, First World War era. All right, we took our wrong turn in. We think we found it now. I think we took the wrong path. Oh, this is it, it's going down. This has got to be it. All right, we found it. Yeah, that's quite the hike. All right. Put my sunglasses away. Oh, squelch. All right, we made it. This is the uh, the Meriton Tunnel, also known as the Grand Trunk Railways Tunnel, and now got known over the years, over the decades, as the Blue Ghost Tunnel. Sort of a blue mist. Really eerie. Anyway, this was constructed back in 1875, completed in 1876, but for some bizarre reason, it didn't open for quite a few years later. And uh, the history books show um, there were several incidents in this tunnel. One of them included a 14-year-old boy getting crushed by the limestone there, fell on him and crushed him. Uh, some reports say up to 107 people were killed along this area, uh, not just on the tunnel, but the building the whole seaway area, the, the old canal here, the third canal. Uh, but it's most uh, famous for, uh, legend has it, is the, uh, the train crash, which happened in 1903, January 1903, I believe it was, something like that, when two trains collided in the tunnel and the two firemen, uh, one fireman on each train, that's the guy who puts the, uh, checks on the boiler, right? So they were both killed. One of them was killed in here instantly, uh, decapitated, his arms and legs are severed and stuff like that. It's even documented that when they found his severed arm, his, his watch was still ticking. And the other fireman was actually transported to uh, the local hospital, but he died about four or five hours later. So uh, this one's a bit more spooky than the last one. So we've got the flashlight, we're gonna go in. Hi, right, Dean. I hear ticking. <laughs> Don't say that. Look at the graffiti everywhere. Just changed my brightness a little bit. Oh, my eye. 
so. Hello? This and the movies, the gate closes, eh? So I'll stay right by the gate. Right, you stay by the gate. He's <laughs> What's that? Oh, I can see the other end. It bends right round, so we were standing on it. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but these are the original railway ties on the ground, which are still here. So, uh, that's interesting. Let's put some light on. I've got my phone here. He's, he's using the Dean's Garden the gate. It's like a gatekeeper. Do much. So the actual tunnel uh, is believed this was created by the hands of hundreds of Irish immigrants that were in the area. They worked here and they worked on this. And, uh, it was their hard work putting these stones, Queenston limestone, just about like the other tunnel, I guess. Uh, really cool. I'm gonna steal a flashlight off Dean and that's gonna quickly run in there a little bit. You gonna guard the door? I'm trying to take a photo as you're going. See you now, so this is where you turn around, come back. <laughs> Holy shit. There we go, now we can see the end. Okay, let's change my camera settings so you can see better. Whoa! That is weird. Really, really freaking cool. Start making our way back. We got what we wanted to see. Maybe we'll change the ice over down. All right, so there you have it. Uh, very creepy. <laughs> okay, I got the camera on you while you walk back in case the ghost goes. Take that, take that light off you a bit. Really interesting. Really. That's really good. Yeah, really All right, we're out of time. We gotta beat the clock because uh, darkness is coming. All right, let's get out of here. We finally did it. We came down here. Rest in peace, souls. I don't believe in ghosts. Mm -hmm. I don't even believe in ghosts. No, no. No. All right. Got to hike back now. We did it. We did it. We did it. I'm impressed with that. It took a while. All right, there you have it. There's another hike and adventure. Checking out some local scary places in the Niagara region. I can't tell you how to get down here, but what I'll do in the comments, uh, like a few other people have done. I'll leave you the coordinates of exactly where this place is. It's up to you to find it yourselves, however you do it, because I don't want to be held responsible for the way you get here. So that's probably the best way. So on behalf of me and Dean, thanks for joining us on this video. And we'll see you on the next adventure. Cheers.
GoPro technology are you on? The dog ate this camera. Are you on GoPro? Are you off GoPro? Uh, legend has it that this small short tunnel still holds the screams of a young girl when she was dying. It was morbid, wasn't it? And in a fit of rage, he killed her and set her on fire and burned her alive, hence the springs. Sorry, hence the screams. Springs? Did I say springs? Hence the screams. Now, I've asked to go by urban... No, sorry. Bing, bing. All right, I've asked to go by what the historian said. And... Uh, let me know in the comments below which one... Nigel's on video telling us he's a screamer and we're by a screaming tunnel. <laughs> so are we going to play that game, Nigel? The bald spot? Yeah, one point for your bald spot. Yeah. 